everyone so today i just wanted to give you guys some more information about dental vision my kind of overview thoughts on it kind of a think or a uh, thought exercise if you will on how uh, i think about dental and vision when it comes to like insurance so a lot of times dental insurance and it's you know vision counterpart these are things that medicare doesn't cover and well, yes, it's a really big gaping hole in our prospects' minds. It is not really that um, the hole that was created when they lost their group cover dental might be a really, I guess you could think of it as a hole that hasn't really been covered. So when, when you think about um, a dental policy, right? Dental policies typically have like a thousand dollar benefit and that is not really like the true kind of um, function of insurance. You know, insurance is, is meant to indemnify you or to really cover catastrophic things. And if you think about dental services, a thousand dollars isn't going to go very far, especially if, you know, you're still paying out of your own pocket anywhere from 50 to 70% of the bill. So what I do is I educate my clients on that fact that hey, you know, if you get dental services done, fillings, maybe it's covered at 50 or 80%, right? And then root canals, potentially if the plan is uh, more of a premier plan, you might get some implant coverage, but that's only 50%. And the most that the plan can provide you with benefits is whatever the annual maximum is, you know, between $1,000 and sometimes have like a $2,500 maximum um, annual benefit. So it's kind of more of a, what do you need dental insurance for? What do you want dental insurance to protect you from? Is it because you want to make sure that when you go to the dentist, you have something in your back pocket that you can utilize? Or is it because you need a specific service cover? And then you can kind of go along the tiered uh, method for dental insurance. There's a first tier services, which is, I consider first tier services cleaning and x-rays. Those are pretty much covered at 100% from day one with most dental insurance companies. The next tier, tier two, is basic services. That's like your fillings, if they're repairing, they're repairing a crown or they're doing some resin stuff like that so that's very cosmetic and not too much structural and then there's major services and that's going to be everything else everything that's like your root canals or if the plant covers implants dentures bridges crowns anything that requires major or, or more than just kind of a surface area um, procedure those services on some plants don't even have any coverage at all. For example, some of the plants that come par or standard on Medicare Advantage plans do not cover any major services. They just cover basic services. And many people might not know that. Many people also may think that, you know, a root canal is a basic service because it's so common nowadays. Or they might think that their plan covers implants or covers dentures and most plans unfortunately do not because those are really expensive services and some plans actually most plans have like a three to five year uh, waiting period between each one of those services so if they got implants sometimes it's a three-year waiting period before they can get another set of implants or sometimes it's only two thousand dollars of lifetime implant services or uh, benefits that they can use so you really have to kind of tailor your product search based on what your client wants i know that sounds really difficult and believe me it is i, I always tend to go with the most basic option and just tell my clients to choose um, unless they have like a super good of work, but I tell my clients to save money, you know, get something that you can afford first and then make sure that it, it meets the needs you want it to. So for example, if you have a need for, you know, cleaning, right, perhaps you get a plan that'll pay for your cleanings and just in case you have some needs for 
do things with such later on, it pays for some of that, right? But you're getting at least one for one with your money. So if you pay, let's say you pay 30 bucks a month for it, $360 a year, a cleaning costs anywhere between you know, 80 to 100 some odd dollars. So you get a couple cleanings and an x-ray that brings you almost at that $300 level, which now puts you back at pretty much one for one with the insurance. And then, you know, if you get anything else happens, it's kind of a, a bonus coverage. Now for, for those people who have specific problems, that's when you're going to need to really weigh using insurance or using like a one dental or discount dental program. Now, these the dental discounts and dental insurance can be used interchangeably. Dental insurance will provide you with a but I guess the best way to put it is it will provide you with a pool of money that you can use to go to any insurance company or any dental provider that accepts that insurance, right? So, you have like a policy that has a thousand dollar benefit, you got thousand dollars of extra money that you can access at like say 50% of uh, whatever uh, the service is, if it's basic 50% or if it's major 50%, you know, whatever your cost share is. With the dental discount program, you don't see any of that. But what you'll see is how much you actually have to pay the provider, which can again be sometimes very, very scary because it still says a root canal can be like seven hundred dollars, which is is quite frightening. Unless you paid for root canal with insurance, because I can tell you, my daughter had a root canal and a crown placed. I believe the entire procedure cost with insurance now we had HDS was over $1,600 with insurance. So with the dental discount program, it may have been around the same cost. I don't know, but it may have. And that's where you can try and educate your client. We don't know how much things are gonna cost. We honestly don't. With the dental discount program, you're given a range of what the cost could be. With the insurance company, the, the dentist is gonna charge you maximum amount because the insurance company is going to minimize their reimbursement. But your 50% could still be 50% of the maximum amount that they're gonna charge you. So when it boils down, and I know this is more of a thought thing than like kind of rocky into all the numbers. For the most part, when you're dealing with dental insurance, number one thing, if your client is an emotional buyer, find out what emotion makes them happy. If they want insurance and they seem to not think that the dental discount program is going to be insurance enough for them or provide them with enough insurance to feel like they've got enough protection, don't worry about it. Walk them down the different insurance options that they have based on their location and based on their uh, needs as far as how much insurance they want to buy and what services they want to make sure they are covered. If your client is a logical buyer, present them with the most benefit or the biggest benefit plan you know like the 50 something dollar per month plan what it covers and then also show them what a dental discount plan covers because dental discount plans can cover similar services at similar co-pays and then let them know how much per month they're going to be saving for example $50 a month is $600 a year then the discount program is $100 a year. You're saving 500 bucks every year off the bat. So is that $500 savings going to make, or I guess going to kind of be worth it versus paying for that $500 for the insurance? Like where is that break even? Where do you go um, based on this logical buyer's, I guess, ability to kind of in their own mind figure out what they, they need. And that's not your job, but it's your job to kind of guide them through the thought process, especially for someone who is a, a logical buyer, like someone like myself, who logically thinks things through. And at the end, if there's a net benefit to buy, if there's a net loss, you probably won't buy. So that's how you think about that tool. And from there, I want you guys to give me some questions on maybe some scenarios you might have in your head for yourself, some, that, some scenarios you might have.